are a new creation. For this saving mystery is for the water, let us bless God, who loves, who is, and is to come. We thank you, God, for your river of life, flowing freely from your throne, through the earth, through the sea, through every living thing. You rescued Noah and his family from the flood. You opened wide the sea for the Israelites. Now in these waters, you flood us with mercy, and our sin is drowned forever. You opened the gate of righteousness. We pass safely through. In Jesus Christ, you calm the troubled waters. You nourish us and you close us in safety. You call us forth and send us out in lush and barren places. You are with us. And you have become our salvation. Now breathe upon this water and awaken your church once more. Call us again as your beloved and holy people. Quench our thirst, cleanse our hearts, wipe away every tear. To you, our beginning and our end, our shepherd and lamb, we honor and glory, praise and thanksgiving, now and forever. Amen. reconciling love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Let us pray. O God, O God of peace, you brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great sheep of the shepherd. By the blood of your eternal covenant, you make us complete in everything good, that we may do your will and work among us all that is well pleasing in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
bodies you brought again from the dead Lord our Lord Jesus Christ the great shepherd of the sheep by the blood of your eternal covenant make us complete in everything good that we may do your will and work among all of us that is well pleasing in your sight through Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit one God now and forever Amen.
of America. This morning's first reading is Acts chapter 9. Now in Joseph, there was a disciple whose family was Tabitha, which had grieved the Jordan. She was devoted to good works and acts of charity. At that time, she became ill and died. When they had washed her, they laid her in the room upstairs. Thus, Lydia and her job, the disciple, the church Peter was there. Got two minutes of the request. Please come to us without delay. So Peter got up and got with him. When he arrived, they took him to the room upstairs. All the widows stood beside him, weeping, showing to him other clothing that the workers had made, which he was with them. Peter took all of them outside, knelt down, and prayed. He turned to the body and said, Tabitha, get up. Then she opened her eyes, and seeing Peter, she sat up. He gave her his hand and helped her up. Then calling the saints of widows, he showed her to be alive. This became a girl Tabitha. And he believed in the Lord. Meanwhile, he stayed in Job for some time at a certain time. The word of God. Good morning. This morning, Psalm, Psalm 23. An oldie but a goodie. The great responsible. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. You restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along right pathways for your name's sake. Our second reading is Revelation chapter 7. After this I looked, there was a great multitude that no one could count, of every nation, of all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne before the Lamb, robed in white with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a long voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne, to the Lamb. All the angels stood around the throne, and around the elders, and before the living creatures. They fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, singing, Amen, blessing, glory, wisdom, thanksgiving, honor, power, and might. Be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these gold complaints? Where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one to know. And he said to me, These are they who have come of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes, made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they are before the throne of God, and worship them day and night in the temple. And the one who is seated on the throne is them. They will hunger no more, thirst no more. Son will not strike them for any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to the spring of the water of life. God will wipe away every tear from the eyes. The word of the Lord.
Gospel according to John. After he appeared to his followers in Jerusalem, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias. No, this is the wrong text. Hang on. <laughs> Take two on this one, right? My apologies. At that time, the festival of the dedication took place in Jerusalem. Jerusalem, or Jesus is in Jerusalem here uh, in the middle of John's Gospel. It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple in the portico of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I have told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name testify to me. But if you do not believe, because you do not belong to my sheep, my sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. What my Father has given me is greater than all else, and no one can snatch it out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. My wife reminded me that there was a game that we used to play in the past with youth groups where one person was blindfolded and put in the middle of the room, surrounded by everyone else. That one person in the then then one other person in the room is designated as the voice. The person who is blindfolded is told to listen for the voice and only to follow the directions of the voice. Everyone else in the room adds their own voice and tries to lead that person astray to themselves. As you might imagine especially when played with middle school youth intensity, it can become very energetic, quite chaotic, and a noisy experience at the least. It can be a pretty powerful and straightforward illustration of our lives and the challenges that come in doing that living life amongst the distractions and competitions for our attention and our devotion to all those things that are ever present in the world around us. On this fourth Sunday of Easter, in our reading from John's Gospel, we are reminded of the way in which we are invited to listen for and hear the voice of the Good Shepherd to whom we belong. Like the stimulation game of listening for the voice, we too often find our lives filled with distractions and other voices that vie for our attention and that seek to lead us in ways other than the voice. We forget, quite frankly, in the midst of it all, who we belong to. Take any current political issue, for example. To which side do you belong? Are you Republican or Democrat? Are you an independent or progressive? Have you ever critically asked yourself why you belong to that particular side? Now, I suspect it probably has a lot to do with the way you were raised, or perhaps the conversations that you've had with good friends, and how many of us are similar to our parents or to our close friends then in our political leanings and belief systems. So what question, the question is, what voices do you listen to in determining how you ought to think or view a particular issue? Have you ever critically reviewed those voices to ask, are they synonymous with my faith? Are they synonymous with the voice of Jesus? Do you listen or watch CNN or perhaps you watch Fox News 
Do you subscribe to Newsmax or to NPR? Because whatever voices you tune into, those are the voices that shape your political opinions and likely guide you in your actions in public. What we listen to feeds us and molds us into the people we are, not only in private, but in our public lives as well. So in our text today, truly interested religious folk, the Jews, are begging Jesus to tell them plainly. They want to go behind the curtain and have Jesus simply lay it out. If you really are the Messiah, then tell us, because they want to know if they should follow Jesus or not. In other words, you see, they want the easy answers. Just tell us plainly. Just spill it out for us. Because we want to have the easy answers in our life. We don't want to have to struggle to understand and discern. But Jesus, according in many ways to his own character, chooses not to answer their question and instead points them to his actions. He says, the works that I do in my Father's name testify to me, but you do not believe. And then here's the kicker he has, because you do not belong to my sheep. Then Jesus goes on to say something quite remarkable. My sheep, he says, hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. Jesus then goes on to tell them that that he is the good shepherd, the one who lays down his life for his sheep. He warns them that they are false shepherds, or that there are false shepherds who mean to do the sheep harm, abandoning the sheep when the wolves come to snatch them away. He's referring to Ezekiel chapter 34. In contrast, though, Jesus says he is the good shepherd, the one who truly cares for the sheep. Who indeed came that they might have life and have it abundantly, Jesus says earlier in this chapter. Like sheep under the care of a good shepherd, they trust the shepherd. They know his voice and follow him, not because of the words he is speaking are right or wrong, but because of the compassion of his actions show them that it is truth. They know his voice and they trust him with their lives because he loves them. How do you hear the voice of Jesus? How do you listen to him to follow in his ways? Some of you may be well aware of the ways of sheep. Although there tends to be an assumption made that sheep are not among the most intelligent of animals, they actually are not really dumb at all. It has been suggested, perhaps by cattle ranchers, uh, that they are that the cattle ranchers are responsible for spreading the rumor that sheep are dumb because sheep do not lead, do not behave like cows. You see, cows are herded from behind in the movies hooted by hooting cowboys with cracking whips, if you will. That is a method of herding that does not work with sheep. So if someone were to stand behind sheep making loud noises, they would most likely run around behind the person because sheep to be led. They often will not go anywhere that the one leading them does not go first. Their shepherd, in particular, who goes ahead of them to show them the way that everything will be all right. Cows are pushed, but sheep are led. So one who has worked with sheep tells of his amazement of the relationship developed between sheep and their shepherd. He remembered how growing up he could walk through a sleeping flock of sheep without disturbing a single one of them, while a stranger could not step foot in the fold without causing pandemonium. Sheep, you see, seem to consider their shepherds part of their family, and the relationship grows between them is quite exclusive. They develop a language all their own that outsiders are not privy to similar to how a parent perhaps learns to distinguish between the cries of their children. A good shepherd learns to distinguish a bleat of pain from one of pleasure, while a sheep learn that a cluck of the tongue means food, or a two-note song from a pipe means that it's time to go home. According to one author, in Palestine today, 
It is still possible to witness a scene that Jesus almost certainly saw 2,000 years ago, that of Bedouin shepherds bringing their flocks home from the various pastures where they have grazed during the day. Often those flocks will end up at the same watering hole around dusk, so that they all get mixed up together, eight or nine small flocks turning into a convention of thirsty sheep. Their shepherds do not worry about the mix-up, however, because when it is time to go home, each one issues their own distinctive call, a special trill or a whistle, or a particular tune on a particular reed pipe, and that that shepherd's sheep then withdraw from the crowd to follow their shepherd home. They know whom, to whom they belong, and they know their shepherd's voice, and it is the only one that they will follow. So when despair of the world attempts to drain our hope and our confidence in the goodness and grace of God, the image of the good shepherd and the sheep can be a comfort to us. For just as the shepherd cares for his flock or her flock, and as the sheep trust in and know the voice of their shepherd, we too can trust in and know God's love and God's voice and care for us as we trust God's actions of love and compassion toward us. We can remember to whom we belong and rest in the goodness and grace, the love and care of God that equips us and enables us to live God's love in our lives and in the world around us. Because sheep know their shepherd, because they are his, they walk, graze, feed, and sleep in his footsteps, beneath his rod and staff, the psalm said, within constant earshot of his voice. So we are to believe in and walk with the Christ because we belong to him. We know his voice. We listen to him. And as we allow ourselves to become fully and deeply his, he becomes fully and deeply ours. He walks ahead of us, and we will only learn his path by hearing his voice and walking in it. We are called by to hear his voice and to follow him. The only question to be asked is, will we? I pray we do. Amen.
maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. He was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary. He became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He was crucified and buried. And on the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who as the Father and Son is worshipped and glorified, who is spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge the one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Set free from captivity from sin and death, we pray to God, the God of resurrection, for the church, people in need, and all of creation. Gentle Shepherd, enable your church to respond to the voice of Jesus. Give us unfailing trust, unafraid to join in Jesus' work of renewing all things. God, in your mercy, feed your people to the table of creation. Prepare a safe place for those whose environments are dangerous or unhealthy, especially those making difficult journeys. Prosper your creation for the sake of every living thing. God, in your mercy, warm the hearts of all who celebrate and all who mourn on Mother's Day. Accompany those yearning to be mothers. Help us to heal from broken family relationships and open us to receive your nurturing love from all who serve mothering roles in our lives. God, in your mercy, seek out those who weep while they await healing for consolation, especially Lisa Nicolakis here, Jeff Rosman, Kim Posova. Carol LaRosa, Jeff, and Rita King, and those who we name aloud for hold in our hearts. God, in your mercy, set people in their path who can provide the care they need. Wipe away every tear from their eyes. God, in your mercy, inspire the words of prophets and saints to employ innovative imagery to stretch our understanding. Send Christ to instruct us with motherly care. God, in your mercy, Let this congregation pray for those who cannot be here with us today, including Carol LaRosa, who is homebound. Let us pray for our brave men and women in the military, Faustine, Jordan, Brent, Nathan, Michelle, Jacob, Zachary, and Micah. Thank you for those who will return home. You show us how to provide them care and understanding. Comfort those who grieve and gather around you those who have died. 
God, in your mercy. We pray for the families of loved ones who may be facing trials of drug addiction. Give them your strength to help the addicted seek a way to wellness. We pray for our church families. This month, we pray for Joseph Carlson, the Clarks, the DeLong, the Benedictinardos, and the Earls. God, in your mercy. We pray for our Little Lambs family and teachers and students. This month, we pray for Jackie and her class, Sage, Harper, Axel, Amir, Madeline, Ariana, Amelia, Alec, Charlotte, and Benjamin. God, in your mercy, we pray for those who grieve, especially the friends and family of Bob Martell, Tony Clark, and Patty Gray. We pray for the family of the Rutland Middle School lost their son and pastor. Enfold in us, enfold us in the great magnitude of the saints from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages. Wash us in your saving grace every day, guiding us through your waters of life. God, in your mercy. In your mercy, O God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. My friends, the peace of Christ be with you also, always. Amen. Let us share God's love.
your peaceful reign and you welcome us at your table. Reach out to us through this meal and show us your wounded and risen body that we may be nourished and believe in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. It is indeed right in our duty and our joy that we should at all times and at all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Will you pray with me? We give you thanks, generous God, for in this bread and cup we have tasted the new heaven and earth, where hunger and thirst are no more. So send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection, that through our lives all may know life in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, God, the author of life, Christ, the living cornerstone, and the life-giving spirit of adoption, bless you now and forever. Amen.